Welcome to the second video in the Dashboard Overview series. In this video, we will build out a web traffic dashboard. And we'll start to build out our dashboard with adding graphs and multi-plot graphs to the dashboard. I'm now going to walk through how to build each of the panes on the dashboard where we're using graphs. The easiest way to build a dashboard is to start with a search. I'm going to search for request equals all. This will return all results where the request fields have some value in it. In my demo account, I have a number of different data sources. So this allows me to focus just on the web traffic I'm interested in. I'm going to click on expand graph. And here I'm getting a graph of the matching events per second. I'm going to set this to 12 hours. And now we're seeing the contour of the number of logs coming in in the past 12 hours. I can save this to a, a dashboard. And let's call the graph web traffic. And we're going to create a new dashboard. And let's call this KW web traffic. From here, I can click on go to dashboard. And now I can view my graph on the dashboard. I'm going to hit the back key. Now if I want to add another graph, looking at my time MS facet, this is a numeric facet. And because it's numeric, I have the ability to graph values. And I'm looking at the value of this facet over time. So I'm going to click on graph values. You can see I'm using the mean function to represent this. There are other functions as well. You can check off 90th and 99th percentile, for example, which gives me a visual representation of the average response time, but also shows me the outliers as well. This way I can get a sense of the folks that are having the worst experience on the website and what their performance looks like. So let's save this to our dashboard. I'm going to call this response time. And we're going to save to existing dashboard this time. And we can go to our KW web traffic. Now I can click on go to dashboard. I can see I have both my graphs now on the dashboard. Within the response time graph, if I click on the magnifying glass, this allows me to go back to my graph. So if I click on mean, for example, this is taking me right back to that graph page. I can also get a breakdown of my response time looking at my various facets. If I click on page here, the page facet shows each of the different web pages on my site. So I'm going to choose to break down by page. I can see the relative performance of each page. I can see that my login page is spiking every few hours. And my home and profile pages tend to take longer to load on average than the rest of the pages. I'm going to add this to my dashboard as well. And we're going to name it page response time breakdown graph. We're going to add it to our existing dashboard. In our previous video, I mentioned that saving a graph to the dashboard and loading that dashboard causes a time series to be created automatically. There is an exception with breakdown graphs. The values in the facets can change over time. So what happens is we don't do the time series. Instead, they're rendered on the fly. And as a result, this may take a bit longer to render, especially over a longer time period. But there is a solution for this. The solution is to build a multi-plot graph 
that bakes in all of the values of the pages. And because my page values don't change much over time, this is an acceptable solution for this scenario. So I'm going to go in and add a line area graph. And let's call this page response time multiplot graph. And what I'm going to do here now is add a plot. I'm going to select mean and time MS. Oh, we, there we go, time MS. And now I'm going to select my filter. We had the request equals all. And this time we're going to actually set also a filter for the specific page. So we've got our request equals all. I'm going to type in page equals home. And then we're going to just also change the label as well to home and click OK. I'm going to go in and add another plot. Again, we're going to select mean time MS. And we're going to do request equals all. And page. This time we're going to do profile. And click OK. Now I can keep adding in each of my pages here, but let's just click OK. And I'll show you something that will help save a little bit of time. Now that we have a few plots selected, if I go in and click, click on Edit JSON, this will allow me to go in and edit. So what we can do is just copy and paste. go. And what we're going to do instead of home, we'll do login. And we want to change the label as well. And we can do that for each of our pages. So now that I have my multiplot graph, you'll notice if I switch the time to a little bit further out, let's just say 3D, and that's three days to now. You can see my graphs loaded and it took a little bit longer for that breakdown graph to load, but that multi-plot graph loaded very quickly. And that concludes the video on adding graphs to a dashboard. Please feel free to join us in the next video where we'll continue to build out the web traffic dashboard and we'll add some power queries to the dashboard and look at adding big numbers to the dashboard as well. Thank you for your time and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.